I'm very pleased to introduce this topic guide from Hart um, and MQ Sun. Very pleased that IDS had a key role in the production of it, and I think it's a really interesting and valuable document for policymakers and practitioners who are interested in producing malnutrition, specifically undernutrition. Um, undernutrition is a massive problem throughout the uh, developing world, especially in South Asia and Sub Saharan Africa. There are 165 million kids who are stunted. That means they're not growing properly. Um, and not growing properly is the least of their problems. They have immune system deficiencies. They have cognitive deficiencies. They'll get sick more often. 45% of all kids who die under the age of five die because of the underlying cause is malnutrition. Um, the kids who survive will have poorer schools, schooling scores and schooling performance. Um, when they hit the labour market, they'll earn less money, lower wages, and they'll be much more likely to live in poverty. So investing in early childhood stunting and malnutrition reduction is a fantastic investment. The benefit cost ratios are in the range of 30 to 1. So how do we go about combating malnutrition? Well, there's three areas, I think, that the, the topic guide covers very nicely. Sort of nutrition specific interventions which are things like breastfeeding promotion, supplementation, infant and young child feeding practices. They have a very particular aim to improve nutrition status. The big challenge with those is how to scale them up. Um, at the moment the coverage of those programs is very low, the spending on them is very low and the capacity to deliver them is very low. But even if you can scale them up to 90% you're still only going to deal with a fifth to a third of undernutrition. So how do, we, how do we deal with the rest? Well, a lot of the problem has to be dealt with through the second set of interventions, which is nutrition specific, sorry, nutrition sensitive interventions. And these interventions are things that attack the underlying causes of malnutrition, so food security, care, women's status, water and sanitation programs, health system. Um, but they have to do more than that. They have to have a very specific um, goal to improve nutrition status. And the problem with those interventions is that the evidence base is very weak. We don't really know enough about how to make them sensitive to nutrition improvements. We know a bit. We know you have to have the indicators in there. You have to target the most malnourished. You have to have some nutrition behavior change components embedded within them. But it's not a straightforward thing to do. So massive evidence gaps there. And they're, they're being filled, uh, but they're still, they're still there. And then the third area for in investment and intervention is what we call the enabling environment. And this is an area that IDS is particularly involved in building the evidence base for. How do you build an environment where it's actually easier to invest in nutrition and where your nutrition-sensitive programs work better and your nutrition-specific programs can be scaled up more easily? What are the resource requirements? What are the accountability and commitment mechanisms? What are the capacity needs? What are the governance and politics of, of malnutrition? And that's the enabling environment set of issues. And when you put all three of those together, you're going to get action. And when you look at the countries that have been really successful in driving undernutrition down over the last few years, we're talking about uh, Maharashtra in, in India, Peru, um, Ghana, Vietnam, uh, even Cambodia to some extent. These countries have had everything kind of coming together. The specific interventions have been scaled, the sensitive interventions have been implemented in a strategic way, and the enabling environment is quite supportive of undernutrition. And it all starts really with high-level political commitment. Um, leadership is really vital for nutrition, because nutrition is everyone's responsibility, or everyone's business, but nobody's responsibility. And so it really requires powerful leadership from the top, uh, but leadership at all levels to really make it, make it happen. So it's a, it's a massive challenge. There are still 165 million under fives who are stunted. Uh, the scaling up nutrition movement is a really positive development, but the challenge there now is to convert all of that momentum global level into national level momentum and then to convert that 